<laughs> okay, well, we're just uh, thanking God for his love and his mercy, basically, because we're all sinners, even even the best of us, um, you know, so, you know, it's, it's the... Our country doesn't even know, you know, like Pastor Adam was saying, you know, what what to celebrate. I mean, it's like everybody is so divided now about what America means, and so um, and the church is just as divided. You know, the Episcopal Church came out; they're gonna they're gonna uh, have perform gay weddings in their congregation, and uh, so you're gonna have the church is gonna be divided on it. Some churches are going to welcome gay couples and they'll marry them, and other churches uh, will not. You know, so uh, so what does that mean? You know, people are going to look. The young people are going to look to the church and say, "Well, well, well what's right? What's wrong?" The Episcopal say it's right. The Catholics say it's wrong. The Methodists. What do the Methodists say, Pastor Adam? The Methodists are divided. <laughs> the Methodists are mixed. <laughs> They're mixed. No, that's what. Yeah. That's the reality that we're dealing with. Even within the Catholic Church, there's division. You know. So if the church is divided, you know, is it is it any wonder why ISIS is, you know, getting more and more support and because they're not divided. They're very clear about what they believe. And if you don't believe what they believe, they believe they could kill you because you don't conform so and and we know that isis is clearly interested in taking over the whole world they're not just interested in staying you know in iraq or syria they would like nothing more than to if, if the christians can't do it if the christians can't put out a a message that you know is consistent you know they're going to do it and then then we lose everything at this point so Anyway, this song is called uh, No One Like Jesus Guru, who is a uh, guru is a teacher in the Eastern tradition. And there's no one like Jesus because uh, no one else died on the cross for our sins. That's the bottom line. Who else? God didn't come, come down to this earth and become Buddha. He didn't come down and become Muhammad. He came down and became the person of Jesus Christ, who in essence, you know, gave everything for us. And... And but you remember this, he, Jesus said, before I return, because we know he's coming again, he said, will I faint, find faith left on the earth? So Jesus was very clear in the Bible that we're not like he's not coming to a packed house. You know, he's not coming to a packed house. So hopefully we'll be the remnant, you know, the, the wise virgins who are waiting for him.
everybody together. No one like Jesus. No one like Jesus. No one like Jesus. No one like Jesus. Jesus Guru. You know what? There's no one like his mother, Mary. And I would like to invite uh, Lisa, Buggy, and Brian wants to come with her too. Uh, Lisa is an artist from Indiana, Pennsylvania. And Lisa, Lisa has, um, she's been amazing her life and her story and her conversion. And uh, recently, she returned with her husband from uh, Medjugorje, Yugoslavia, a place where since 1981, people have been reportedly receiving messages from Mary, who has been appearing to this village, this group of people, and directing people to the urgency of the times and the return of, of Jesus Christ. So Lisa is a very spiritual woman, and we're very fortunate that um, her and her husband, and uh, there's going to be a new store opening in this area. It's called Blessings, and it's going to be an art, art store, religious art, spiritual art, music, books, in New Florence area. So we're very, very excited about that. But I invited uh, Lisa to come today. She, this is the first time in public that this image is being seen by the public, and I'm going to let her explain to you uh, the meaning behind this image, and uh, she has, um, you know, she has some inform more flyers that she didn't bring, but she'll fill us in on any anybody interested in more about this image. Thank you, Lisa.
Can you hear me? Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, it's funny that Dominic is here today. Um, we go with him twice a month down to the abortion clinic and to pray down in Pittsburgh. And I heard him tell the story that he told you about asking God for a gift. And I, I thought when I was praying, I was saying prayers for my kids. I even wrote it in my journal. I was saying prayer for everybody. And at the bottom I put P.S. And I asked St. Faustina through her, her intercession to help me do some type of artwork for God. And a couple years later, um, my daughter gave me an art lesson. And I've been doing a lot of drawings. This is the first painting I did, but um, I'm, I, I'm more comfortable with drawing. But um, Tom needed me to do an image for him. And this is the I was reading a couple couple different things and then with my trip to Medjugorje and everything I kind of put this picture together with God's help <laughs> and um, I, I entitled it the Triumph of the United Hearts. Um, I didn't tell you that yet, Tom, but that's what I I called it the Triumph of the United Hearts. And I found this prayer that kind of um, sums it up. Um, it was in the, the Sacred Heart book, The Heart of the Redeemer, and it says, The heart is the spiritual center of man's soul, and Jesus has loved us with a human heart, and his heart is still burning with love for us. To show us the greatness of his love, he wished his heart to be pierced with a lance, and he showed it to us as a striking image of his love. And in the painting I have, um, united with the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I have the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Um, Almighty and Eternal God, you willed that your only begotten Son should be pierced by the soldier's lance as he hung upon the cross, so that from his open heart might be poured out upon us streams of mercy and grace. Grant that the heart of your Son ever burning with love for us, may inflame our hearts with love for him and enkindle in us a true love for others. Thus the hearts of all men, united amongst themselves by their mutual love, will be united within the heart of your son by their love for him. And actually that, that pretty much explains, but I did um, put together some other things that help explain it. Um, there are key figures in this image who work together in unity for God to accomplish his plan of salvation and to do his will. And there in the, the painting, there Jesus, his, by his sacred heart, he's depicted, the Holy Spirit, the Blessed Mother, the priest who symbolizes the church and the sacraments, and the children of God. The spiritual battle is between all of them, and Satan, the seven-headed dragon, on the left-hand side, is the dragon of Revelation 12 and his demons. They totally oppose God's will and kill and destroy all that is good. This spiritual battle is an obvious reality right now and becomes more obvious every day as we watch the, the news with ISIS, global abortion, human trafficking, the redefinition of marriage, and just all the, the violence and evil that's going on in the world and the immorality. And we must wake up to this reality. And one of the most important things we can do is pray and read the Bible and listen to what Jesus has told us to do. And I totally believe that as Jesus was born into the world the first time through the Blessed Mother by the power of the Holy Spirit, that he is going to return the second time through her and the Holy Spirit. Um, the Blessed Mother has been urging us for centuries in her apparitions to return to God, and she always leads us to her son Jesus. And her heart is joined with his heart, 
And at Fatima, she said that in the end, her Immaculate Heart will triumph. And I think this triumph will come, will take place when the love of the Sacred Heart of Jesus reigns in all of our hearts. Um, the other book that I was reading that helped me formulate this picture is called The Flame of Love. And it's a diary um, written by a woman in, in Budapest, Hungary in the 60s. And it was dictated to her by Jesus and the Blessed Mother. And she was asked to light a candle and then to go to one of her priests. And this is symbolic, the lighting of the candle. But it symbolizes lighting the love of Jesus and spreading it to other people. And she was asked to light a candle and take it to the priest, and then he would spread it, light a candle, and then someone else would light a candle, and it would spread around the world. And it's symbolic of the love burning in hearts for Jesus, and it would be spread from person to person. And that this flame, or this burning love in our hearts for Jesus, would blind Satan or cause him to lose his power. And the two prayers that were given us in this devotion, um, one is, please spread the flame from your Immaculate Heart's flame of love over all humanity. And then the other prayer Jesus asked to pray was, may our feet journey together, may our hands gather in unity, may our hearts beat in unison, may our souls be in harmony, may our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. And um, and I guess that's about it. I mean, I could keep going on, but I don't want to take up too much time. But... Um, I have um, cards printed out, and of course I forgot them, that have the prayer on it and the image, and um, I guess I'll have to give them to you at another time. But, um, well, we did. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Thank you very much. And as Lisa was sharing, you know, about the hearts of uh, Jesus and Mary, it's kind of uh, reminds us of St. Francis. Everybody remembers St. Francis. And one of his famous prayers was, uh, make me a channel of your peace. And so Francis was living uh, before the Protestant Reformation, actually, and, and he was a reformer in many ways. I mean, he, he came home from the Crusades, and the Lord uh, had a different plan for him. And he was uh, just seeking God, and God spoke to him from, from a cross. And he was praying, and he said, Francis, go and rebuild my church. So Francis took that literally to mean to rebuild this old church in the woods there. And, and so he did with, the, uh, with the, basically the outcasts of society of Assisi at of the time, and they rebuilt this little church. Well, God had a much bigger plan for Francis. He ended up evangelizing the Muslims during the Crusades. He literally crossed the battlefield, and he was warned not to. He was told he would, he would be killed, but he, warned, he crossed the battlefield to speak with the Islamic sheikh and mentioned and shared the gospel with him, basically, and they all wanted to kill him. But the, the sheik was so impressed with Francis. He said, if, if all the Christians were like you, uh, this wouldn't be happening. You know, so that was very powerful. But Francis truly 
was a channel of God's peace. So it was like Jesus was walking around on the earth again through St. Francis to the point where before he died, I don't know if you knew this or not, but he actually received the stigmata. He received the wounds of Christ, and this was documented and witnessed by his brothers. An angelic and a seraphim appeared to him and, and mystically imprinted the, the wounds of Christ in Francis's hands. Well, something a lot of people aren't aware of. This current pope, Pope Francis, he took the name Francis. Now, this current pope is, is a Jesuit, and the founder of the Jesuit order was St. Ignatius, not St. Francis. Francis started the Franciscan order, yet this pope specifically took the name of Francis in honor of St. Francis. And if you look at the direction this pope is going, it's just like if St. Francis was the pope. Because what did he do last week? He called our attention to the environment and to the world uh, around us. And he said, look, he said, if, if the earth is rebelling, if the earth is sick, if the earth cannot contain the pollution and is, is actually uh, erupting in negative ways, that's a reflection of the human race. In other words, the environment is a reflection of humanity. And humanity is a reflection of, of the environment. So if, if, if the human race is totally divided, if riots are happening, people are killing people without any second thought about it, women are killing their own children in the womb, um, everything, is, as Pastor Adam said, is, is in a complete state of disarray. Okay? Now, if you went to Mass today, the reading was from Ezekiel, and God said, go and you tell the people, that Babylon is coming, and in the sins have reached heaven. And it, whether they listen to you or not, they'll know there was a prophet in your midst. So as we proclaim the truth about marriage, about life, and ultimately it's an attack on the human race, whether it's abortion, killing little babies, whether it's gay marriage that's preventing children from being conceived in marriage, whether it's couples who are contracepting out of having children, whatever. If you look at it, it's all about we don't want more human beings. And the justification is there's too many people on this earth. Not enough food to go around. And so we're going to, certain humans are going to make that decision that other humans are not worthy to live on the same earth. And that's what the Pope's getting at. He says you can't do that. You can't be all for the environment or you can't be hoarding all the world's goods at the expense of the poor and at the expense of the unborn. He, been, he was very clear in that encyclical. So anyway, this song is called Make Me a Channel, which was the prayer of St. Francis. And you know, when, um, when St. Francis was gathering his people together and they were all... Uh, the guys were coming back from the Crusades totally demoralized. And they were like, where's Francis? Where's our buddy Francis? They said he's lost his mind. They basically said he's nuts. So he's lost his mind. He, he's out in the woods hanging out with lepers and stuff like that. But these guys knew him, and, and they went out to see him. And one by one, they were like, oh, my gosh, we're joining you. And that's how the Franciscan community formed. Well, the established church at the time was very envious that Francis was attracting all these young men as they're coming back from the Crusades who were willing to just give up their lives to serve the poor and to serve Jesus. And then he'd get the women, Claire, and the women start wanting to be part of it. So they burnt down his little church. And Francis was so devastated by that that he went to Rome. He said, I gotta, I gotta get the Pope's approval because obviously the local church is not supporting my efforts here. So he goes to Rome to try to get an audience with the Pope at the time. And the Pope, he saw him briefly, and he sent him away. He was not impressed with Francis at all. This poor beggar guy that was wearing bare feet, you know, he just didn't. And Francis was just preaching uh, the Matthew 6 about the birds of the air and, and things of that nature. So the Pope sent him away. That night, the Pope, and this is documented, that night the Pope had a dream. And in the dream, he saw Francis holding up St. John Lateran Church in Rome on his shoulders, literally holding up the church on his shoulders. So he was woken up by this dream. He said, oh, my goodness gracious. 
get that guy back here. So he sent to have Francis return. His, his men found Francis and the beggars heading back to Assisi, brought him back to the Vatican, and in front of all the cardinals, the Pope literally kissed Francis' feet in front of everybody and gave him his blessing. And because of that dream that he had. So now Francis eventually died. He was not martyred. And he wasn't even that old when he died. But that prophecy that Francis would hold the church on his back. Okay, that never happened in Francis's lifetime. But is it not happening now? I mean, do we not have a pope who is stepping out in ways... He's reaching out to Protestants. He's going to meet with the head of the Russian Orthodox Church. He's calling everybody together, all of humanity, basically saying, hey, guys, we're all sharing this earth together, and we have got to commit that we're not going to kill each other. Give people time to sort out their beliefs. Yes, we have to do that. God intended for this earth to be a time for us to sort out you know, what we believe, what we don't believe. You know, and we make mistakes and we repent or whatever. But you can't be killing people in the meantime. You have to give people their full lifetime that God ordained for them. So <clears throat> this song is a prayer. It's called Make Me a Channel. And I uh, hope that everybody can join in.
Make me a channel Lord, make us channels Make us your channels Lord, make us your channels Lord, make us your channels your feet, oh make us your eyes, make us your heart, oh it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me, walking the streets of America, crying. Hungering, thirsty, praise God. God, make us a channel of your peace. That's all we can do, as Pastor Adam said. I mean, we just have to be living Jesuses in the world. And living Marys in the world, as Lisa shared beautifully about Mary, you know, our culture, we really have no women role models, unfortunately. I mean, I was reading the other day, a girl, Hillary Clinton touched her, shook her hand, and she, like, passed out. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Hillary Clinton touched me. Well, um, you know, that's what's going on, guys. Miley Cyrus, I mean, the role models in our culture for women are... Very, I'm not saying these people have never accomplished anything, but really as a role model, as to to uh, model a woman, a virtuous woman, who are you going to look to? Who can we look to as a virtuous woman? Really? I mean, who? Does anyone, can anyone mention anyone? That's why God gave us Mary. That's why Jesus gave us Mary. That's why he gave us to her on the cross before he died. He says, woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. He said that to John, the disciple. So we have this amazing woman who is not only like in the Bible amazing, but she is also like doing stuff today in the world. She is leading the charge against abortion. She loves these babies in the womb. She will not abandon them. Even if their own mother and father abandon you, do you think the mother of God is going to abandon these unborn children? It's not going to happen. So we have to continue to speak up for the unborn. There's no question about it. Because if you're not defending the unborn, you're not defending anybody. And that's why I would rather hang out with a pro-life atheist, really, than a pro-choice, quote-unquote, Christian. Because if that pro-choice Christian believes it's okay to kill somebody, and if it's just him and me left in this world, He's going to justify, you know what I mean? But if you're pro-life, that means you respect all human life, including elderly people, right? Including babies who are deformed and handicapped. Uh, we just have to open our hearts. So anyway, uh, this next song is uh, called Angel of God, and it's about our guardian angel. And that's also something, you know, right at conception, God gives every child conceived a guardian angel. That angel comes with, I believe, the spirit of that child, and the soul is formed right at conception. So Jesus even mentioned, he says, woe to those who uh, offend one of these little ones, because each of them have an, an angel appointed by God. So this is the, just the traditional song, Angel of God, My Guardian Dear, with a little bit more of a contemporary beat to it. To my 
to God, to go to God. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love reach to me ever this day be at my side. Call on our angels, guardian angels. We know you're here. We honor you this day. And we thank you for watching over us, protecting us, protecting our children, protecting our loved ones. Everyone should know it, right? Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love, to whom God's love, and it's to me here. Ever this day be at my side, to light, to guard, to rule, to guide. Guardian angel, everybody. Guardian angel, God, my guardian dear. God's love, to whom God's love in which to be here. Ever this day, ever this day, be at my side. To light, to guard. So yeah, make it a habit. Say that prayer every single day. And uh, we need the angels. We can see clearly. Uh, I'm just, my family's down the beach today in New Jersey, but in North Carolina, it's not that far. And there's been, what, a dozen um, shark bites. So what's going on? You know, they're saying that the ocean's getting warmer and these sharks are moving up further up the coast. You know, so... But here again, our guardian angel, I just had a house burned down in New Florence. I owned that house that went up in flames. The people, they left and uh, they weren't home, but that, that house went up in flames. That stuff is happening all the time. And this is a small little town, Bolivar, but stuff happens in Bolivar, you know. So we really do need our guardian angels to watch us and protect us every step of the way. You know, I was on my way here this morning preparing at my house, and my truck got stuck in my yard as I was loading up the back of my truck. The four-wheel drive wouldn't work, right? I'm looking at, like, oh, my gosh, I'm stuck. I'm not going to get here. But, you know, thank God for the Kubota. <laughs> they pulled it out. But seriously, I was in a total dilemma here. I don't know what happened to Father Tim. He was supposed to be here, but hopefully he's okay. Anyway, this song is called I Want Somebody to Love. Just want somebody to love. I just need somebody to love. I just crave somebody to love. Where can I find somebody to love?
I just want somebody to love. I just need somebody to love. I just crave somebody to love. Can I find somebody to love? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. I just want somebody to love. I just need somebody to love. I just pray somebody to love. Where can I find somebody to love? Of you beyond all love, I love you beyond all love, beyond all love, I love you, my child, I love you beyond all love. so blessed that Father Tim has come. Uh, so anyway, I'll do one more song. Uh, the art on the on the uh, stage here, you can see it's um, different types of art. We're really excited about the Blessings Store coming to New Florence, where we're going to be able to provide and uh, be an outlet for religious articles, articles of blessing, and... There's a rehab center coming into the old school in New Florence as well. So we're going to hopefully be able to encourage uh, some of these people who are trying to uh, be delivered from drug and alcohol addiction. Okay, and we're, we will do... Um, Oh my gosh, we're going to do a beautiful song, and it's called Advocate Echo, and it's an echo song that you could uh, sing along with. I don't know if you want one more. Dom's going to stay for one more song. Thank you, Dominic. And uh, 
the uh, my uh, my Protestant brothers here, you know, they're going to sing this song about the Blessed Mother, but they're cool because they they're they're into the Bible too. So uh, so this is a just an echo song, very easy. By the way, there's nothing in Protestant theology that says you're not allowed to love the Blessed Mother, in case anybody's wondering. I mean, she is totally available to everyone. Amen. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen. Hail, Holy Queen. Hail, Mother of Mercy. Hail, Mother Mother of mercy, hail our light, hail our light, our sweetness, our host, our sweetness, our host. To thee do we cry, to As children of Eve, oh, that is to me. To thee do we send up our signs in this valley of tears. Turn them, most gracious advocates. Thine eyes of mercy towards us, no mercy towards us. After this our exile, show unto us Jesus, who is Jesus. Who is Jesus? 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 The fruit of thy womb. The fruit of thy womb. Clement, O oh, loving. Sweet virgin, oh sweet virgin, pray for us, pray for us, that we would be made worthy, that we would be worthy of the promises. Thank you, Dominic. And we will see you again soon, brother. Dominic and I have been uh, practicing more and more, and we are uh, available for concerts. Um, anybody looking for an Italian duo, man? We're here. We got it. If you notice in the back here, over where Pastor Adam is, a poster of a of a child who was rescued from abortion. Uh, Eric, could you bring that child up for us to see? Should bring it right here in front for everybody to see. Um, 
And then right here where the video is too, we can put it on the video camera. I was rescued from abortion. 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 I didn't want to die. I was rescued from abortion. My mother didn't know. Rescued from abortion. She made an appointment. I was rescued from abortion. It's going to cost her $500. Rescued from abortion. I didn't want to die. I was rescued from abortion. Who could save me? I was rescued from abortion. Who could hear my cry? Good news, Pastor Adam Stump is standing by the door of the abortion clinic, and Father Tim and his group were praying for me, and my mother listened, and she knew they were right. I was rescued from abortion. Thank you, Pastor Adam. I was rescued from abortion. Thank you, Father Tim. I was rescued from abortion. Thank you, Lisa. I was rescued from abortion. Thank you, Brian. Praise God. So that's my tribute. Amen. All right. Praise God. Thank you, everyone, for coming. He's rescued from abortion. Father Tim, every other Saturday, he's out at the abortion clinic. And uh, Pastor Adam is out there. You know, Pittsburgh, we need you. Thank you. God bless. I'm going to help him find his keys. Really anxious to get home with his wife. Remember, I gave him that CD out of the car. Yeah. I handed him the keys, and he had the CD in the key, and he laid over by the keys player or something. Yeah. 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 Yeah.